Good morning friends. Welcome back to Panika Tutorials. In this video, I want to discuss one of the gate question which came in the year 2007 related to effective memory access time. These kind of questions will help you to understand the concept in a better way. So I request everyone to watch the complete video for better understanding. First let me read out the question, then I will discuss the solution with you. Look at the question. A demand pacing system takes 100 time units to service a pace fault and 300 time units to replace a dirty pace. Memory access time is one time unit. The probability of a pace fault is P. In case of a pace fault, the probability of pace being dirty is also P. It is observed that the average access time is three time units. Then the value of P is they have given four options. We need to solve the question and find out what is the right answer. To solve this question, I need to discuss few important concepts such as pace fault, dirty pace, what is the pace fault service time. All these concepts let me give an overview for you. Then I will solve this numerical question. Now, first let me discuss about pace fault. Okay. Now, let's consider that CPU is executing the process PI then it will generate the logical address. The logical address consists of page number and the page offset. Then memory management unit will convert the logical address to the physical address. The physical address consists of frame number and then frame offset. So each process will have its own page table. Okay. The number of entries in a page table will be equal to number of pages in a process. Now, if suppose let's consider that CPU want to execute an instruction which is available in the page number 2. So, CPU is looking for the page number 2. Now, if the particular page is available in the main memory, then which frame it is available will be provided here. Let's consider that particular page is not available in the main memory. Then we will say that it is a page fault. Let's consider that page number 2 is not available in the main memory. Then we will say that it is a page fault. If it is available, then we will say that it is a page hit. If it is available in frame number 3, then we will get the frame number 3 here and then frame offset. The frame offset will depend on the size of a frame. Is it clear? Now, I hope you have understood what is a page hit and what is a page fault. Now, let me discuss what is a page fault service time. Let's consider that page number 2 is not available in the main memory and it is available in the secondary memory. Then, operating system will take the control. So, there will be a context switching. Currently, process PI is executing. Now, operating system want to take control. So, there will be a context switching. And then page number 2 which is available in the secondary memory need to be transferred and uploaded in the main memory. So that process we will call it as swap in. Bringing the page from the secondary memory and load it into the main memory is called as swap in. Then again the operating system will give control back to the process PI. So there will be a context switching, data transfer and then context switching. This total time we will call it as a Pace for service time. Is it clear? Now let me discuss about the dirty pace and on-demand pacing. Is it clear? Now let's consider that you have a main memory and the main memory is logically divided into frames. Okay, you have a main memory. Some part of the main memory is occupied by the operating system and then you have the remaining Let's consider it frame 1, frame 2, frame 3, frame 4 is available. And there is a process PI, okay, process PI is logically divided into pages. Then it has some page number 0, page number 2, page number 3, page number 4, page number 5, page number 6, page number 7. So totally it has 7 pages. And remember one thing, the page size will be equal to frame size. If you have four frames and you have eight pages, the meaning is that the process size is greater than the main memory. Now, we always say that 
whenever CPU want to execute any instruction, that instruction should be loaded into the main memory. Now, if your process size is greater than the main memory, how can we bring all the instructions of a particular process and in load it into the main memory? It is not practically possible. Okay. Now, then only the virtual memory concept comes into the picture. What is meant by virtual memory? We give an illusion to the user that a, a process which is greater the size is greater than the main memory also can be executed. How it will be done? On demand paging. What is meant by on demand paging? Whenever a CPU requests for a particular page, that not only the particular page will be loaded into the main memory. Let's consider that CPU is requesting for the page number 0. Whether the page number 0 is available in any frame of the main memory? No, it is not available. So, there is a page fault. So, then what will happen? The operating system will load the page number 0 in one of the frame. Let us consider it was loaded in the frame number 1. Now, CPU is asking for the page number 1. Whether the page number 1 is available in the main memory? No, again it is a page fault. Let us consider that page number 1 was loaded in the frame number 2. Now, Page number 2 CPU is asking whether the page number 2 is available. No, it is not available. So, this is a page fault. Then on demand, meaning is that CPU is asking for the page number 2. Then operating system will load the page number 2 in one of the frame. Now, CPU is asking for the page number 7. Whether page number 7 is available in the main memory? Not available. So, again it is a page fault. So, operating system will load the page number 7 in one of the free frame. Now look at here, all the frames are full, so main memory is full. Now let us consider that CPU is requesting for the page number 5, whether the page number 5 is available in the main memory? No, it is not available. So again it is a page fault. Now what we have to do, the operating system has to load the page number 5 into the main memory. Now already the main memory is full, so what we have to do? we have to use the page replacement technique. Now, we have to find one victim page from the existing pages in the main memory and swap out that one, meaning is that page number 0 have to be swapped out and then page number 5 has to be swapped in if the victim page is page number 0. Now, the victim page will depend on what page replacement strategy you are using. We have several page replacement strategies such as first in first out, LRU, optimal page replacement algorithms. All these ones I will discuss in the coming lectures. Now look at here. Let us consider that page number 2 has been modified. The data which is available in the page number 2 is modified. So in page table we will have a dirty bit. The dirty bit will be kept as 1 meaning is that the particular page has been modified. If the particular page information has been modified, then information available in the main memory will be different to the information available in the secondary memory. So what we have to do? We have to load this information. Now what is this dirty bit significance is that the data has been modified. In that case, what we will do is that let us take that page number 5 need to be swapped in. Then what? And the victim page, let us consider that page number 2. Then first page number 2 will be loaded into the secondary memory because the data here and the data here is different. If it does not load, then the update which has happened here will not be reflected in the secondary memory. Is it clear? So, this page number 2 will be copied into the main mem secondary memory and then page number 5 will be loaded here. Is it clear? So, that is what they have given here. A 300 time units to replace a dirty page. So, the page number 2 has to be replaced. So, first it has to be copied in the second memory. Then, whatever the page you want to bring, then you can bring it and load it here. Is it clear? Are you able to understand? I hope you have understood all these concepts, what is related to this question. So, now look at the question. They have given a demand paging system takes 100 time units. Okay and 300 time units to replace a dirty page. Memory access time they have given it as one unit and the probability of page fault is p. In case page fault, the probability of page being dirty is also p and the effective memory access time they have given as three time units. Now we need to compute the value of p. Is it clear? So first to compute the effective memory access time, we need to compute the 
phase fault service time they have not given phase fault service time ps directly is it clear are you able to understand they say the probability of ps being dirty is p if ps p is dirty then how much time it will take 300 time units okay if probability of ps being dirty is p probability of ps being not dirty is 1 minus p Okay, now if pace is not dirty, how much time units it will take? 100 time units. Now let me simplify this one, pace for service time. Is it clear? 300p plus 100 minus 100p, which is equal to 200p plus 100. So this is the pace for service time. Is it clear? Now we need to compute the effective memory access time. The formula for computing the effective memory access time is P is the probability of pace being fault. Is it clear? Pace fault can occur. If pace fault can occur, then pace fault service time plus memory access. If pace is not fault, if pace is hit, then only we have to access the main memory. Let me simplify this equation. P into PS plus P into M plus M minus P into M. Then if we simplify it, we can cancel both of this one. Then this equation can be simplified it as P into PS plus M. So the effective memory access time can be written as P into PS, P into PS plus memory access time is it clear are you able to understand it or not if you observe carefully they said it is observed that average access time is three time units so they have given the effect to memory access time is three time units so three is equal to probability of pace being fault is p so this is p into pace fault service time which is how much 200 p plus 100 so p into 200 p plus 100 are you unable to understand now even if you look at they have given memory access time is one time unit so plus one if you simplify this equation you will get it as 3 is equal to 200 p square plus 100 p plus 1 which is equal to 200 p square plus 100p minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we need to get the a value. This equation is in the form of ax square plus bx plus c and if we want to get the, let me write this one. This equation is 200p square plus 100p minus 2 is equal to 0. So this equation is in the form of ax square plus bx plus c Okay, so what is the formula to compute the root minus b plus or minus b square minus 4ac by 2a. Okay, if you substitute in th these values in this equation, you will get the p value as 0 0.0194. If you have a doubt, you can simplify it. So, Look at this one, option A, 0 0.0914. So that is the right answer. The remaining options are wrong. So the right answer for this question is option A. Is it clear? Are you able to understand it or wrong? So it is clear for you. If you still have any doubts related to the this question or related to the concepts I have discussed in this video, feel free to ask me in the comment section. I will try to clear your doubts as early as possible. Thank you for watching the complete video. Have a nice day.